My name is Sandy Peters, and I'm here with Eli Gregory, and we both work on the Runtime Example Apps team, building uh, example apps. And one of the ones we're here to talk to you today is building a mobile data collection app with the Runtime. So we'll talk a little bit about why we built we built this app and, conti and are continuing to build it. What is it? What it does, and how we use the Runtime to build it. And then finally, how you might customize it for your own use. And hopefully at the end of all this, you'll have some questions for us that we can try and answer. So a little bit of background about the app. This is a tree survey app, which is basically an app for collecting tree survey data um, and supports a number of workflows, both connected and disconnected. In both workflows, we're adding trees, adding inspections about trees, such as the height or the condition of the tree, editing or deleting those inspections, and then simply just viewing data of the tree in the city of Portland. The data, the data for this app was provided by the Portland Maps open data site, and it actually represents real trees in the city of Portland and data that's been collected over the years by volunteers and arborists as they maintain the, the tree population. The intended audience for this um, application is kind of two main groups. One is a set of volunteers who would be helping arborists and neighborhoods plant trees. And these might be citizen, citizen scientists who are interested in growing trees and making sure trees survive in the city. And so we've kind of pitched the app in a kind of crowdsourcing way. And so it would have social, it has social login. You can log into the app with your Facebook or Google credentials. It also um, is aimed at city staff, arborists, and neighborhood support uh, people who would, might have um, other privileges that social login users might not have. And so it uses a named user account for those types of use cases. And um, I want to talk a little bit about preparing data for uh, offline and, and online workflows and kind of how, how the data progresses um, from ArcGIS desktop where you would build your map and publish the services to the server or your organization or the portal. Or alternatively, you could build out the web map using existing services on AGOL and publish the service and consume services from uh, the server. And in any case, you end up with a web map, which then is consumed within your mobile device. And this constitutes the online workflow mode, where all the edits and changes and queries happen against the server using a service. Alternatively, if you have disconnected workflows that you need to support, maybe you have spotty network connections or unreliable network connectivity, you would think of using an offline work mode where you actually download the map and the geodatabase to your device and then apply edits locally. And at some point when your network connection is guaranteed and strong, you would then synchronize against the server and save your changes. And you could synchronize one or, multi, or both ways, depending on what you want to do. So the next thing we're going to do is have Eli talk about the backing services for this app. Thank you, Sandy. So at the core of our backing services, we have the tree feature layer service. Right? This is every tree uh, in a public space in Portland. And of course, this contains a tree table. Um, we also published a species table, which contains attributes um, related to all sorts of different kinds of species, their scientific name, uh, their common name, uh, functional types, etc. Of course, multiple trees can adhere to one species. Um, we published a neighborhood feature layer service uh, and uh, containing neighborhood table um, for all the neighborhoods in Portland. Um, of course, one neighborhood can also contain multiple trees. And then we published an inspections table. Right, where one tree has multiple inspections. And finally, we, we are leveraging the power of the World Geocoder service to run a reverse geocode so that we can find the address of the tree uh, that we are adding to our map. So I'd like to show you uh, right now a live demo of the connected workflow uh, of this application. So as you can see here, um, we've, we've launched the app and uh, the extent of Portland is displayed. Right, but say I'm, say I'm in the field and I'd like to uh, make 
a, a new tree and a new inspection for that tree. Because I know that a new tree has been planted since the last time uh, uh, someone from our organization has been there. Uh, I'd like to do that now. So let's, I'll take the moment to zoom to my location. Um, and you can see that we are standing uh, at the edge of this circle, Lad Circle. And I know for a fact that a, a new tree has been planted right there on the edge of the circle. You can see it's loading the address. Um, and it is a Oregon favorite. It's a Douglas fir. Um, with a, a median of about 50 feet wide, there's no overhead wires. Um, and I'll go ahead and save that tree. Right? Uh, and now I've uh, reached this inspection pane. I know that the, the tree is only in fair condition and the, the tree diameter uh, at breast height is about 22 inches. I'll submit the inspection, it'll save, and you can see on the map now the tree's been added uh, with the symbology uh, in yellow representing the condition of the tree that we just talked about. So how does that look in code? So we are, we are in this application we're, we're leveraging the related records API. Um, so in the event that I'm adding a new tree, um, you saw in that form that we, we are able to select a species, right? Well, relating one record to another is really as simple as uh, this line of code that says feature relate to another feature. Okay, so we've, we've related those features, we saved them to our service, now it's time to query them. We can, we can use them in our application. It's really as simple as first you maintain a reference to the feature table. So in this case, uh, we'll, be, we'll be querying the, the tree table, right? Uh, tables actually have um, an array of relationship information to other tables, right? So now I want to grab uh, the relationship information, um, the one that's pertinent to um, the query that I'm, I'm trying to find is, is the species, right? So first I'll, I'll iterate through the relationship information, I'll, I'll cross-reference the relationship name with the, the relationship that I know that I'm looking for, which is tree to species relationship. I'll then take that relationship information and I'll pass it into an AGS related query parameter object and then run that query parameter, um, run a query related features for, for that tree feature given the parameters that contains that relationship information. It then returns to me results. Uh, it's essentially an array of, of features and then I can pass that back to the application and do with it whatever I'd like to. I'd like to pass this back to Sandy and she'll demonstrate the disconnected workflow, the offline workflow that this application supports. Thanks, Eli. So Eli just went through the online workflow on an iOS device, and I'm going to take you through the offline workflow on an Android device. So I'm already logged in, and I can go ahead and s focus on the area that Eli was working in, in Labs Edition, Southeast Portland. So I'm going to navigate to that area. And wait for the trees to come up, and we can see the tree that Eli added and the inspection that he also added. So that's there. And let's say that I want to actually work in this area with my volunteers in an offline mode. So I'm going to go ahead and select the area to download. While that's downloading, let's look at some code to see what's really happening behind the scenes. So as you saw in the demo that I just showed you, I passed off essentially a region, an envelope um, of the area that I want to download to this function that I called take offline. And um, as part of this process of taking a map offline, I'm also taking the, I'm taking the layers and also the base map. And because I'm exporting a vector tile layer as part of the base map, I need to set some credentials on the portal. So I stashed away my credential and then go ahead and set the credential on the portal and then do some housekeeping within the device, like clearing the download directory, 
and then creating a file path that I'll be using to store the name of, to store the offline map. I then generate some offline parameters by specifying the region that I'm downloading, the min scale and the, map sc and the max scale. So the min scale in this case is just the current scale from the map. Then I move on to create the offline map task by passing in the actual online map itself. Once that um, has been done, I can start indicating to generate the offline map given the parameters and where I want to store the file. And then I start the task, and while that is downloading, um, as you saw, we're, we're showing a, a modal progress dialog. We want to keep the user from interacting with the map at this point while the, the offline task uh, continues. And upon successful completion, well, before, first I need to, to add a done listener. Since this is an async task in Android, I need to add a done listener. And when that job completes and is successful, I um, get the path of the, of the file, the location of the file, and save that for later consumption in the app. I dismiss the download, the dialog, um, and then I actually get the map from the job result, so get offline map. And as part of this process, um, one of the things you want to kind of troll for are any errors that may occur during the download process. And these errors would be associated with the layers in your web map or the tables. And here we're just logging if any errors occur, um, making sure we are aware of them, and then making the user aware of them as well. Once the, um, uh, the map has been obtained, I then set the view model um, with the offline map and um, the map view is then going to display the offline map. Another thing that, I'd, that I'm doing here in this last section is because I'm going to be doing geocoding in offline mode, I need to have an offline geocoder, and, um, which has been prepared in um, ArcGIS Pro. And it's attached in my project as side-loaded into my assets folder. And so what I'm doing here is, unpacking and expanding those and making those available to the application. Um, so a couple of kind of points I wanted to make sure to get across about um, feature tables uh, and an off online and offline workflow. A question might come up in your minds as to, if I'm working in these two different modes, do I need to worry about persisting my data in different ways? Do I need to think about using a different API if I'm in offline versus, off versus when I'm in online? And the fact is you don't. All of the feature, all of the edits and activities we're doing are, are basically against the feature table, and namely the ArcGIS feature table. Here we can create features, we're adding, we're editing, we're updating, deleting, and we're querying. There's quite a rich query interface available in the ArcGIS feature table API. There are some considerations to make, though. In a connected workflow, we're actually dealing with a service feature table since we're talking to a service. And there is a particular command that you need to issue after you create a feature and add it. And you need to basically say, apply edits async, which is sending a message to the server saying, take these edits and apply them to the server. This is in contrast to the geodatabase, which you've downloaded as part of the offline task. You end up not having to do that apply edits async because all your changes are local. And the sync task, which you employ later on to later synchronize the changes, are what is used to actually synchronize against the uh, online services. Um, in addition, there are some features or there are some uh, methods in, uh, and calls that you can make with querying features async that have to do with loading all the features. And you can do that in the service feature table um, API. And that essentially means load all my features and load them right away, as opposed to having to wait for them to load. And that's a nice handy kind of helper method to kind of um, work with when you're um, needing to kind of have features show up right away. And this is in contrast to uh, the geodatabase feature table where all of the features that you're working with are already loaded, so you don't have to actually wait for them to load. Um, just seeing if the uh, download task was completed. 
It looks like it has not. Um, so let's go back to the have an emulator running. It looks like the offline um, task didn't complete, so let's. I'm going to try this again with the device, connected device. So it looks like we're not getting anything. So let's try this again. Hmm. Yeah, it could be network related. So that's going to take a little bit of time. Um, let me start an emulator which actually shows. What an offline map looks like. Sorry about this folks. Live demos always have some curse going with them. That's the wrong one. Sorry. I want this guy. Oh my gosh. Let's cancel that. And here's the offline map that I downloaded earlier. It's not going to show the map that Eli or the tree that Eli added because he added it after I downloaded this map. But let's go ahead and add a tree here to this offline map. Let's see if we can sync it and get Eli to see it on his side. So we'll create an apple tree. We have the offline geocoder geolocation working. And this is a median again, 50 feet in diameter, just like Eli had set earlier. And there are no high voltage wires. Add the tree. It shows up in the map here. It's a black dot. And we'll go ahead and add an inspection. It's a good, good condition. 13 feet in diameter, or inches in diameter. OK, now let's go ahead and sync that map. And while that's happening, let me show you the code for this. So similar to the offline map task, we have a, another task called the offline sync task, offline map sync task. And it consumes the offline map that you want to sync and um, take some parameters, in this case, the direction of the sync. And I want it to be bidirectional. And then um, once that is set up, I can start the job and add the listener. And then the result I get is basically information about the job. And I might want to query again for any kind of sync errors that have occurred, both either either on the layer or the table layer, table um, on the, either on the layers or the tables themselves. And then I probably want to log any messages if they've occurred, and indicate to the user whether there is any whether there was a successful or unsuccessful uh, synchronization. So let's go back to the emulator now. We can see that the map has synced. And um, I'm going to hand it back to Eli, who can talk, who can then show you on his side what it looks like. It also looks like it picked up um, the tree that I logged a moment ago. So now there's two trees. Um, and bringing it back to the web map, if I pan around, it should read. Ah. You can't see the map. Okay. So as you can see, there's two trees now. Uh, the tree that I logged uh, a moment ago um, now appears here. And if we come back to the 
iOS simulator, you can see the log that was, uh, the tree that was logged while in offline mode and then synchronized again to the web service. Um, so you might be wondering, at this point, how do I get the source code? My organization has a need for data collection. Uh, we have a need for offline data collection and to be able to synchronize that with the web service. What, where can I get this? Uh, it's coming soon, coming in spring 2018. By now you should be familiar with the developer's website, developers.arcgs.com, uh, and you can find all of our example apps, including this, to come uh, in uh, example da uh, dash apps. Um, we support all sorts of platforms. Um, and you, the next question you might have is, how could I utilize this app in my own work? Um, we encourage you to fork and modify this. This application is published open source for you, for your organization, and you can change just what you need, uh, add as much as you'd like, and then publish it to the app stores as it, for, for the, 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 the need that your organization has, depending if it's internal or, or, or public. Um, you can use this actually as a reference. Say you don't want to fork this uh, and continue with it, but you understand that we've implemented some design patterns in this that you also see the need for in your application. Um, for, for instance, in this particular application, um, you might have the need to have a data collection app that is connected to services, right? An online connected services workflow uh, that uses basic CRUD database services. Uh, you also might have the need uh, to see how an offline on-demand workflow works, where you can download a map offline and then run local CRUD commands and then bi-directionally synchronize changes. Um, you might also want to leverage feature table related records API. Right? A very powerful API that allows you uh, to easily grab related records from one table to another. Um, what you didn't see in our demo was um, we, we leverage also in this application uh, a social login feature. Right? Um, taking a, a portal item that, that requires authentication and allowing someone to log in using either ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Enterprise, Facebook, or Google. Uh, and, if, and finally, we use the world geocoding service, specifically reverse geocoding. If you'd like to see how that design pattern is implemented, you're welcome to check out our example app. I'd like now to open up the, uh, the floor to any questions that you all might have. Also, uh, what are you building? What, what do you have the need for data collection? Yeah. Mobile data collection? for iOS or Android. Yeah. Are um, many of you using the SDK right now? Two or three? Are you, are you building a specific data collection app currently or are you? Are you finding that there's uh, a need that your organization has that collector doesn't necessarily offer out of the box? Like would this, um, would this kind of application help you or help your organization? Are there any example apps that you would like to see built to help you in your development process? We're always interested to know what types of apps you care about that you need patterns for or uh, examples of. Thank you, yeah. Ooh, can't hear you. Sure. Did you hear um, that? She, she asked us to repeat what people are saying. Oh, okay. Do you want to go ahead and repeat that? Me? Um, the question just was, is uh, do we have the ability of demonstrating um, the ability to edit a non-editable feature layer in an example application? Um, and we're, at, at this point, we're asking people for what do they want to see in example applications. So uh, the floor is open if you, if you have any ideas, if you have any requests. Mm -hmm. uh, so with the offline map test, are there any ways that 
as soon as you let users start going offline, maybe calculating how much data they're going to be downloading first or any best practices there for when they're connected to cellular network on their phones. So the question is, um, is there a way to configure the offline map task to kind of provide an, enough information about how long it might take and the amount of data that's being transferred down from the task? Currently, that's not part of the API, but I know there are definitely, um, uh, there's definitely an interest to provide more information as to the, t the amount of information coming back. Um, and I think the cellular service question is probably something that you'd have to configure on your own and measure on your own. But currently, the, the task doesn't provide these things. But there's, there's definitely plans to enhance them. Um, also, on building on top of that, and maybe answering a question that you didn't ask uh, directly, um, our toolkit, if you're familiar with, we, we publish uh, open source toolkits uh, that are written by us and then maintained by us. Um, I know in the iOS toolkit and maybe others, there's a, a jobs manager that will actually safely uh, pause and then restart jobs. Um, say there's an interruption uh, in your app, um, it shuts down or, or you get a call. Um, this, this jobs manager will help bring things back. So it's not necessarily um, you know, directly uh, metadata about what the, the download, but, but there are um, but there, there are ways to when inevitably, you know, if you are downloading a large uh, map offline and the user didn't help themselves and pressed, you know, close, exit the background, we have ways of, of those returning at least safely uh, in the meantime. Yep. Yeah. So um, the question is okay. So the question is about managing content that's offline, and do how much do you have to do to clean up uh, between sync jobs and uh, taking different maps offline? So that's completely taken care of by the offline map sync task. It does all the synchronization, and then you're responsible for the map directory and where it's stored. And if you want to delete that, you give the that's under your control. And you can of course download multiple maps, but then that becomes again. If you're, multi if you're managing multiple maps, offline maps, it is your responsibility to manage the location of those. And I believe different sync tasks would um, be able to identify, like, you, have, you basically pass it the offline map to synchronize. So it knows that it's working with this, with, with this particular map. Yeah. I'll repeat that in case you couldn't hear. The question was, what do we do with um, with two offline uh, maps competing for the synchronization? The answer is, last one in wins. And I think we've reached uh, the end of our time. Thank you, everyone, for attending our, our demo theater. Um, check the developer's website for example apps.